Hello friends, give me a second and we will get this show on the road. Pull this up, try to make the uh, picture a little better. Hey, amazing. Yeah, that actually looks a lot better on that camera than it does on the front facing camera. That's kind of cool. Um, all right, and that way I can see you guys chatting and I can actually respond to these things and we can move the camera up nice and smooth and that, that transition looked really cool. All right, so what's going on everybody? Sean Pierce Johnson here. It is a nice Southern California day or as nice as a uh, almost 100 degree in October day can be. Uh, obviously, you can see where my attention is going to be most of... Uh, the day as uh, you know my Dodgers are finally in the World Series almost 30 years later and uh, the game starts in about half an hour so we got a little bit of time and I have a nice massive box oh from my new friends at TZ Electronic and I am very excited to open this uh, open this bad boy up and see exactly uh, what we got going on I mean I know essentially what's going on on the inside because I asked for some stuff. But uh, I, I am I am very excited about this. There's a lot of TC stuff that I've always had my eye on trying and I finally get a chance to uh, check it out. And so we're gonna take it out. I'm gonna give you guys kind of my thoughts on why I wanted to check it out and some of the things that uh, I'm looking to do. Obviously we have some interesting things that we can talk about as we do the unboxing. And if you guys have any questions and uh, about whether or not how I would use these or uh, what my opinion of it is, if I've tried it yet, uh, and if you've been enjoying the GitCon videos and want to know some things about GitCon, I'm happy to take those questions as well. So we're going to start. I always love when companies have branded packing tape. I just think it's one of those small touches that just kind of makes the whole unboxing experience uh, a little bit more fun. Get this packing list out of the way. I gotta say, uh, big thanks to Tor and Tobias for sending along uh, all these amazing, amazing pedals. Um, it was a whole, whole lot of fun to meet uh, Tor at uh, GitCon and work on some uh, tone prints with him and have just a, it was just so much fun. It was a dream come true. And uh, yeah, I, I can't wait for you guys to hear these uh, tone prints that we came up with because uh, personally, it's gonna save me a, a whole lot of effort and a whole lot of uh, headaches as uh, I go out into the uh, gigging world. Pardon me, some tea. Mm. It's so hot here today. It is unreal doesn't even feel like it's fall and that kind of sucks because I love I love fall weather and I just don't get it all right big old things of paper and first we'll start with a tiny little thing here is a nice clip-on headstock tuner the unitune uh, of course this is not the polytune it's the unitune so you can only tune one string at a time and uh, this is honestly is what I'd rather have in, in a headstock tuner. Uh, I had a Polytune, um, one of the first versions, and the Polytune was great. It was a good tuner. You know, most tuners really do the same job, and they all do it pretty damn well. Uh, but I just I never used the polyphonic uh, feature. I just found that it didn't work for me. Oh well. So anyway, time to. Uh, move on keep going and uh, see what we got all right first thing the force field compressor which uh, actually is going to be a in the very near future episode of stomp off saturday and i think packaging is really nice i like the uh shiny black just a nice understated uh logo and graphic design on there really nice but this is quite a cool compressor, uh, one that I really enjoyed checking out, and uh, the demo of which is coming very shortly. It's going to be a, uh, a shorter, more along the lines of the first season of Stompbox Saturday, just one straight shot. Um, 
there's a lot of really cool tones on this, and uh, I really wanted to get it back home uh, and use my gear with it uh, to see what I could coax out of it. It's a great compressor, and we'll definitely be uh, putting it through some paces in some future videos. A lot of these uh, I'm trying to see uh, in within my schedule for the remainder of the year and then early into next year, uh, how I'm going to work a lot of these demos. So we'll just kind of see how things play out. Next one is the Echo Brain, the analog delay, which is actually going to be this week's episode of Stompbox Saturday, and that's another one from GitCon. Uh, this is definitely a winner for me, whether or not I've tried it with my gear or not. There you go, the Echo Brain. This is a great sounding analog delay. Not a whole lot of time, even at max, not a whole lot of time, but it's got a very well-tuned uh, tone to it. It's not uh, too crazy. You can get crazy if you want, but uh, a lot cleaner than, uh, like I have the Aquapus by Way Huge, and uh, we're actually going to do uh, some experimenting with those two side by side in a, in a later video. Like I said, I don't know when I'm going to get to a lot of these individual demos, um, but I would be happy to do that comparison to see how they're different, how they're similar and how we could best use them. Let's take a look at some of your questions. Yes, I, I got to it as quickly as I could. Anthony Vu, hey Anthony, how you doing? Uh, will you compare that compressor against any others in your stash? Yes, absolutely, and I will uh, skip ahead another pedal and say one of the ones that I'm going to compare it against is this. It's the Hypergravity Mini Compressor, which is uh, part of the Mini Tone Print line. And I've been kind of looking into a nice mini compressor. When I say mini, like really, that thing is small. Here, I'll bring out the force field and we'll uh, compare and contrast sizes. Say it's, it's a little bit of a uh, male genitalia comparing contest here. There you go. Look at how different in size those are. But here's the interesting thing. Uh, the force field is an analog pedal. The hypergravity is a digital compressor pedal. So one of the comparisons that I want to do is, since they both have three knobs and they are the same exact knobs, sustain, attack, and level, and sustain, attack, and level, these should be a very easy side-by-side uh, -side A and B, what is better, analog or digital, or just, you know, whatever. But uh, that's one of the things that I intend to do. We will definitely be putting the force field up against the hypergravity just to see kind of the advantages, disadvantages of analog and advantages and disadvantages of digital. But uh, I do have a couple others that we can easily put both of these pedals up against. Uh, you know, the orange Kong presser is one that comes to mind uh, pretty quickly. So we will definitely be doing that. So. There you go, hypergravity mini compressor. We'll even check out some of those tone prints. Coffee break. Mm. Oh, that's a nice Kona blend right there. All right, continuing on into the inexpensive pedal line, we have the Profit Digital Delay, which is another one that I've been curious to check out, one that I didn't check out while at GitCon. But uh, my buddy Ryan and Steve at 60 Cycle Hum have done a couple cool videos with the Prophet, and uh, Ryan even did a very interesting uh, mod to his, which uh, I'm not necessarily certain if I'm going to do myself. But the point is, I am very interested in the simplicity of it. Um, and also being able to compare it to the analog counterpart in the line. Um, again, these are the cheap pedals, the inexpensive pedals, uh, one of 13 that they put out earlier this year. So if this thing is any good, you could have this pedal for under $100. You could essentially populate an entire board with these uh, TC pedals. Um, of course, you know, your 
desires and what you're looking for functionality wise is completely up to you. Um, but we will test it out and we will definitely see how far we get with it. But so far from what I've heard, it's a really nice sounding uh, digital delay. So there you go. We got the force field compressor, we have the profit digital delay and the echo brain analog delay from the uh, I'm just gonna call them the uh, low priced line that's better doesn't necessarily say anything against their quality but it also doesn't necessarily well you get the point all right time to more stuff and we start out with this guy the helix phaser which uh, I have been very interested in because I don't have many uh, digital phaser pedals. Most of the phaser pedals I have are, well, the Phase 90. And I have the Pigtronics Envelope Phaser, which is wonderful, but there's something about this that I just gotta try. Uh, I know Paul Gilbert has a signature tone print, uh, which I'm keen to check out because I love me some Paul Gilbert. And that is a, it's a very clean package. I, I really like the design of the, the tone print line. Um, very lightweight comparatively to the low price line. The Tone Print series is very lightweight. Uh, we've got four knobs, we got mix, which is kind of cool, you know, if you don't want it to take over your whole sound, you can dial it in however you see fit. We got feedback, speed, and depth, uh, three modes, vintage, smooth, and tone print. So we'll check out some of the tone prints and we'll see, you know, what we can dial up just in and of itself. And uh, let's see what else comes into the box when we get one of these tone print pedals. You get a TC sticker. Looks like we have a little uh, TC. Oh, there we go. A little fold out with the entire lineup so that you can see what other things you can spend your money on. Other than that, you get the uh, USB cable. And the fact that I'm going to have one of these USB cables in each one of these tone print pedals. It's kind of insane. So I'm gonna have a lot of USB cables lying around. All right, Helix Phaser, excited to check that out. Now this next one is one that really took me by surprise while at GitCon, and that is the Dark Matter Distortion Pedal. Um, the reason it took me by so much surprise is based on its appearance and based on its name, you would almost think that the Dark Matter, a all-black distortion pedal, and it is Dark Matter Distortion, you would think that, I'm going to try to get a good close-up on that for you guys. Let's see, there we go, got a little bit of delay going on. There we go, that's in focus. You would think, depending on, you know, the way that that looks, that this might be geared towards heavy metal, high gain tones, and believe me, you can definitely get some really nice high gain tones out of it, but it doesn't necessarily come across as a metal pedal. It actually just comes across as a distortion that is just a really nicely voiced amp style, leaning towards the high gain spectrum distortion pedal. I was playing this in the session with Tor making the tone prints and it was this with the uh, pedals that we did the tone prints for and going into a Joyo Beale Street, which is kind of a, uh, I suppose you could say that it is a, a tweed-ish uh, style amp, about 15 watts and really just does clean. It do if you want any crunch out of it, you're gonna have to crank the thing. So other than that, you know, th there was, it was pretty darn clean and we couldn't turn up very loud. So this was the main part of the dirt, and I really felt comfortable with this as my main dirt tone through that amplifier. I felt like all the nuances of a high gain tone that I wanted were there in this pedal. So I wanted to bring it home and I wanted to check it out with my gear, with my different amplifiers, and see how much use I could get out of this. And we'll take a closer look at that uh, in a future video. But yeah, Dark Matter. I liked it in Germany. I hope I still like it here in California. So that is one that I am very excited about. Let's take it to your chat and let's see how you guys are doing. Jay Steen, what's up man? How you doing? Uh, if you have one regular analog and one digital delay, don't you have them all? 
Why not both? Why not more? Yay! I don't know. Um, if you have one regular analog and one digital delay, don't you have them all? Sort of. Not necessarily. Um, I would say that when it comes to analog delays, there's a lot that you can get in uh, variances on components. Um, when we take a look, when we AB the profit with the Aquapus, I'll go into that more. Digital, that depends. Some guys, they choose to have their digital delays being a little bit more, uh, have a little bit more of a high-end emphasis. Whereas some people uh, will tune that high, those high frequencies out, like uh, what Keeley does with his uh, delay pedals. He'll tune those high frequencies off, out, shave them off a little bit so that you get more of a uh, friendly tone. So is it worth buying more uh, to continue on with that question? Absolutely. I think it is definitely worth buying more. I don't think that you should have just one thing to cover all your bases. Growing up how I grew up, uh, my dad was a carpenter and he had a lot of tools and still has a lot of tools and he has multiple hammers and multiple screwdrivers and they each handle a certain job better than the other. Now that's not necessarily me advocating for hoarding effects, which uh, I can admit that I've been guilty of in the past, but it certainly says something to have a toolbox at your disposal so that you can, you know, say you need a, a ball peen hammer. A ball peen hammer is, is a different kind of tool than just your standard, you know, hook hammer. I don't even know how the hell you would say that. My dad would be better uh, suited for that analogy. But you just have to have the right tools for the right job. And, you know, with a, uh, unfortunately for me, with, uh, the, what you call it, with like a Boss Digital Delay. It's a great sounding digital delay pedal, but at the same time, there are other digital delays that have a different tone to them that I would rather use than that. So that's the whole thing there. That's why I would certainly advocate uh, for getting more things. Uh, we have Dementoid. They are DOD or something like that. Anyway, old plastic pedals in a new case is what I heard. Yeah, the low price line is uh, Behringer. Um, Music Group, which is the parent company of Behringer, uh, purchased TC Electronics sometime within the last two years. Um, and basically, from what I've heard as well, um, TC was tasked with revitalizing the old uh, Behringer line. Uh, of inexpensive stomp boxes, but I think they really upped the quality because those older Behringer pedals, although some of them sounded pretty good and were essentially boss ripoffs, uh, they came in plastic enclosures and the packaging wasn't very good. This is a much better quality package uh, outside and as far as the product goes than those pedals were. So I, I think it's a win-win situation. You know. The, a lot of people were really worried with TC's acquisition of what that was going to mean for their product line moving forward. Some people that I know who work at TC would say that it just, the place changed and so they don't work there anymore. But then others say that it really gave us an advantage. And so there you go. Now we've got these cool inexpensive pedals that actually sound pretty darn good. Uh, you all have a Dark Matter, awesome, and a Mojo Mojo. Cool. Um, I know Paul Gilbert uses the Mojo Mojo almost exclusively now. Um, yeah, we got somebody going on. There you go. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, keep moving on. We got some more mini pedals in here. The Vortex Flanger, part of the mini tone print line. And this is one that I was interested in, mostly because I... Don't really have a flanger on my board right now because the one that I like, the MXR flanger, is just a little too large and uh, I'm looking to downsize. So try this little puppy out and see if it works out. And of course we can check out some of those tone prints too. I wouldn't leave you guys 
out in the cold. And this is something that I'm definitely going to add, which it just slightly, uh, I'm shooting myself in the foot here by what I said earlier that I had a polytune because they sent me a polytune to Noir, the mini one. And the reason is because, like I said, I want to downsize my board and I've actually used this one uh, when I was at working with New Neighbor at the NAMM show a couple years ago. Uh, Brian asked, hey, what else should we put on our NAMM demo board? And I said, we need a tuner. And I thought a mini one was a good idea and the polytune just fit the aesthetic that Brian, New Neighbor, well, yes, Henning, New Neighbor, I'm gonna say new neighbor because I'm not on German soil. I'm on American soil. God damn it! <laughs> it's uh, it fit the bill. It, it fit the company's look, and basically that's why I decided that we should go for that, and it worked out really well. So mini tuner for a new board. All right, keep it moving. Keep it moving. We have the Mimic Doubler, which I am very excited about. Um. This is going to be an interesting video when we take a look at it because there's a lot of ways that you could use a double tracking pedal. And the interesting thing with this is it's specifically a doubler. You can get one extra guitar track, two extra guitar tracks, or basically you could double, triple, or quadruple your original guitar signal. And uh, it's got a very interesting set of controls. And it would be very interesting to hear this in mono versus stereo. Now, obviously, some of you guys already out there are probably thinking, why would you want to run it in mono? Because you're really going to hear the doubling effect if you run it in stereo. True. Um, but I've used a double tracking pedal mono before, and the effect that it produces is definitely very interesting something that I really enjoyed playing with and was just a lot of fun. So, uh, we're gonna look at this when we get to that video uh, against, uh, with mono and with stereo and see how those situations uh, could dictate what we might play or maybe the mono is better for certain styles of music, stereo is probably better for n n maybe 50 to 70% of the time. But hey, we're gonna check it out, we're gonna try it, it doesn't matter. A lot of guys don't like to run stereo, like myself, but uh, a lot of guys must run stereo. So, there you go. All right, and hey, we have the new guy. We have the Quintessence Harmonizer. This was a whole lot of fun. I got to hear it, I got to play it a few days before they officially announced it, and it is here in the house, and it Check it. The Quintessence Harmonizer with the MASH foot switch, which, uh, of course, as you guys have seen, the GitCon people have gotten some tone prints going on, which uh, we'll get into a little bit later on in this video. And uh, we had Phil McKnight do a sort of whammy style uh, tone print for this guy, which uh, uses the MASH foot switch. So I am definitely going to be checking that out. And well, I haven't had a good harmonizer in a very long time. So I am definitely looking forward to a nice small format uh, harmonizer to play around with. And of course, in the newer ones, you get the little uh, sticker, you get some other things in there as well. There's a little readout on the mash foot switch, and then you also have a USB cable. So there you go. The last harmonizer I had was a Digitech Whammy. That's what it was, a Digitech Whammy. And uh, unfortunately, both power supplies for that Digitech Whammy 4 uh, crapped out on me. So I haven't used it in a good five years or so. But this does not need a special power supply. It needs just a standard center negative nine volt power supply. Exciting stuff. So let's see, um, looking forward to that MXR versus Vortex comparison, looking for a flanger as well. I'd like to hear your, how uh, you think it compares to say Keeley. Well, I do have the uh, Dino Myroto, which we can compare it up against. Uh, the MXR we might not be able to do uh, 
my MXR flanger is in need of some help. Uh, something's wrong with the power supply. Devin Townsend, Sean Prince are really cool. Not Van Halen, TC for my bunghole. All great sounds and hilarious videos. I, yeah, I could definitely understand that. Uh, did Tor reveal any tidbits about what's next on their MASH roadmap? Uh, he didn't reveal anything to me, uh, personally, and he didn't really reveal anything to any of the other YouTubers, I don't think. Um, really, I think that the MASH foot switch, um, I think that the MASH foot switch is kind of, boy, there's a lot that you could do with it. There's a lot of potential for it. But it's more, you have to understand with new technologies, and this is something that we touched on in the pedal panel uh, on Tuesday night during GitCon. A lot of people are clamoring for originality in guitar effects, and I just think that it's something that a lot of companies are, they want to be original, and they want to come out with cool new products that people are going to like, but unfortunately, as guitar players, we're creatures of habit. We like what has been and what's been proven. Um, there are some of us, like myself, that really enjoy trying new things, but also seeking out new tones just with what we have. Um, and sometimes new technology is not very accessible. So if, personally, what I would like to see uh, the MASH foot switch technology applied to would be, let's see, you know, I would actually probably like to see it uh, on a phaser or the uh, viscous vibe. Um, and the thing with the viscous vibe is you could essentially have it be like, if you, uh, you just turn on the pedal, that's your standard sound. But as you depress on the foot switch and the pressure starts to get greater on the switch, it starts ramping up the speed. And that you can control the ramp up and down of the speed of the vibe effect. So you could essentially have kind of like the, uh, the Dunlop Roto Vibe, which is a fantastic, very underrated uh, Univibe pedal. And there it is, right there. You can have it in a very small package and you can control the ramping just based on the amount of pressure that you put on the pedal. So that's what I would like to see. I'm not gonna say uh, whether or not that's gonna happen uh, because nobody said whether or not it's gonna happen. Uh, I know Music Group said that they're not looking to do any more NAM shows because it's just getting too expensive, but maybe they'll let TC go to the NAM show since TC's booth is usually uh, a little bit smaller. So, uh, Anthony, thanks for the question, and he didn't reveal anything to me, but that's kind of what I would like to see. Uh, yeah, I want a TC Care package, but it would cost over a thousand bucks. Cool, you have all these nice pedals. Nine TC pedals, love them. I, I, you know, man, I just got really lucky. Uh, the TC guys and I, we hit it off, we had a great time. Even though Tor and I disagreed about some things on uh, <laughs> on the panel, I think that I have a, a whole new respect for what he's done for TC Electronic since he has been put in the position that he's been put in. Um, he's intensely creative. Uh, he's a guy that lives by the philosophy, and this is a philosophy that I like. Uh, respect the old, search for the new. That's kind of what I see Tor as. He is the he's the new guard that is looking to the future but isn't going to forget where it all came from. So having said that, you know, I'm very lucky that we hit it off as well and as we did and I'm I'm getting this nice care package which isn't over yet. So let's wrap this whole thing up. Dodger game is about to start in about 15 minutes. So, obviously, if you have seen the 100th episode of Stompbox Saturday, you saw towards the end of the video that something exciting is definitely going to happen uh, very, very shortly.
from myself and TC Electronic, and that is the debut and release of not one, but two tone prints, signature tone prints for the Flashback 2 and the Hall of Fame 2. I am so excited about this. I mean, when they said that I had a signature pedal, it was like every little kid's dream. I was at a loss for words, completely speechless. Had a little bit of trouble breathing, but, you know, of course, I'm fine. But it was truly, it was truly the dream of that 14-year-old boy who just fell in love with music and fell in love with the guitar and making music and now gets the chance to have, well, a signature thing in the world. So, of course, they had to send me the pedals that I'll be having my signature tone prints for being the flashback to which has the mashed foot switch and then of course the Hall of Fame 2 which also has the mash foot switch included and we really came up with some cool as all hell sounds for these two pedals. Um, you can kind of think you might be able to hear some previews of what we were uh, doing in those sessions uh, for the tone prints in that little uh, behind the scenes thing going on. But man, I am I'm so excited to load these up with the tone prints and just start playing around with them, start making some music with them, put them on the pedal boards and just have a blast because they really are things that I designed with a very specific idea in mind and they're going to save some pedal board space, they're going to save a whole lot of time uh, for myself and uh, I think it would be safe to reveal when exactly you guys are going to be able to get the tone prints because GitCon guys are going to get one every Wednesday is when they're going to be releasing new tone prints so today was Juan Alderete's new uh, tone print for the tremolo pedal well I got the word that the tone prints are coming out on Wednesday January 17th 2018 so that's quite a little bit of time but uh, it'll give you guys some time to, uh, to ponder as to what I could have conjured up. And uh, of course, when they come out, maybe we'll do something a little special uh, with these pedals uh, in terms of a demo. And maybe who might want a giveaway? Just saying. Who would want to win these two pedals? I think a few people out there would want to. And we're going, we're probably going to do something uh, like that, giving away a flashback to and a Hall of Fame to. And uh, I'm totally excited about that. So, yeah, that's the TC Care Package. Man, what a massive, massive unboxing. There are so many pedals. My wife is going to kill me. No, she already knew that these were coming, so. You know, she traveled all the way to Germany with me for Get Gone, and we had a great time. We hung out around a little bit afterward, and uh, boy, that was uh, that was a lot, a lot of fun. I had a great time. Um, let's take a look at the chat and see how things are going. Yeah, digital pedals, uh, Chris. Yeah, they eat up batteries pretty quick, so. I won't be using batteries in the digital pedals at all. Um, Jay Steen, I'd like to see more tone, more of the tone prints. Only seen Phil so far released on the app. Um, I'll have to check on that because I'm pretty sure that you can go on to Juan Alderete's page or at least on the. Uh, on the tone print app you can find the, that pedal the pipeline the tremolo and his should be there they were on the site this morning when i checked um charlie s yes. hey buddy how you doing thanks for joining in uh i appreciate all you guys uh coming in on this little live stream here i haven't done 
uh, any of these in, in a very long time. It's been very hectic and very busy around here. Mm. And the coffee's helping. Oh, the coffee's helping. You like my Reverb.com camping mug? Mm. That's good stuff. Yeah, I got that from Frank uh, from Reverb during GitCon. It was a lot of fun uh, doing the video with him. Uh, so if you haven't seen uh, that episode of Stompbox Saturday, please go check that out. It will be something something pretty spectacular. Uh, it was a lot of fun checking out the Love Tone Meatball with him. It was a whole lot of fun. So yeah, there you go, guys. That is the massive, massive, and when I say massive, I mean, look at all this. I'm gonna be buried in petals, I think. It's like Christmas morning, you know? It's like a spoiled kid Christmas morning, you know? I can't. There. There we go. Okay. Hold on. There you go. I'm a spoiled kid on Christmas. Yay! Anyway, thanks for joining me on this uh, whole live stream thing. I didn't really think about it, but I'm going to have to get up to the phone to turn off this live stream. So when I sign out, this is going to be really awkward. Maybe if I just hold still, you guys will just all slowly go away one by one. And I can kind of sneak over to the phone. Or I could just put all the pedals back down. I think that's probably a much smarter idea. So I'll do this. Thank you guys for joining me on this little live stream and this unboxing. Uh, you see a little taste of what is to come in the future, and by little, I mean a lot, taste. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on here, and uh, well, some of it coming sooner than others. The uh, Echo Brain, that is this week's episode of Stompbox Saturday, and then next week we're going to follow it up with the force field from GitCon. Uh, GitCon videos are basically going up until the end of the month and go into next week. It was a good time. But we'll talk about GitCon another day. I'll take you guys questions about GitCon and how things went there uh, and basically how I felt about the whole thing. So until then, my friends, thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't done so, please click the subscribe button and I will see you all real soon. Hopefully sooner rather than I'm running over stuff. Goodbye. Maybe not. There we go.